Hello, my name is Varun Nayar and I'm a research editor at the Museum of Art and Photography, Bengaluru. I'm thrilled to be collaborating with Morgan Library and Museum in New York on MAPS Museums Without Borders series. In this edition, we bring together two remarkable studio photographers, Malik Sidibe from Bamako, Mali and Suresh Punjabi from Nagra, India, both of whom made thousands of portraits of everyday people in the second half of the 20th century. Hi, my name is Leela Ann Harris. I'm the Edith Gowan Curatorial Fellow at the Morgan Library and Museum. And I have here a 1966 chemise by Malik Sidibe, a recent addition to our photography collection. So Malik Sidibe is a Malian photographer. He opened his studio in Bamako, the capital city, around the time that the nation gained independence following French colonial rule in 1960. His photographs depict modern West African life and show a kind of post colonial euphoria. So this euphoria expresses a sense of excitement at nation's independence and also is connected with the emerging youth subculture at the time. And this youth subculture is associated both with celebrating emancipation and the nation's independence as well as connected with more globally the 1960s youth movements. By the time Punjabi began photographing in 1979 and opened his studio, he had already been engaged in photography and working for a decade, first as a hobby and then as a traveling freelance photographer. When he opened up shop in the commercial artery of Nagra, um, he invited clients from a number of different socioeconomic backgrounds and faiths and provided them with a range of photographic services, including matrimonial photographs, family and wedding albums, and passport style images. This was also a time when photography studios were becoming increasingly common outside major cities, while personal cameras were still a luxury commodity for most. For many in Nagra, the studio became an affordable route to self-presentation and became a notable center of community life. This was also an interesting time for the Hindi film industry in India. As the waning years of the golden era of Hindi cinema had come, by the early 1960s and been replaced by a more vibrant and commercial style of Bollywood with its own narrative and visual style. As a photographer, Punjabi encouraged sitters to play the role of an imaginary protagonist, enacting a performance inspired by the visual language that saturated the popular culture of the time. For such everyday fantasies, Punjabi's camera served as both an audience and a collaborator. So what we have here is an example of Malik Sidibe's chemise. So this chemise or folder, it contains 14 gelatin silver prints. They're each about two by three inches in size. They were all taken on the night of January 22nd, 1966. And we know this because Sidibe inscribed both the outside and the inside of the folder in ink with the date and also the name of the club, Les Frangins, which translates to the brothers. It's like slang for the brothers, so the bros. And then under each photograph is a unique numeral. So oftentimes after photographing a party, Sidibe would rush back to his studio and in the early morning hours, quickly develop and print photographs so that the next day he could put up a chemise like this in his studio and his customers, the party goers, the subjects in the photographs could come by, take a look at the photographs and if they so chose, buy a copy. According to Sidibe, he was invited to all the parties, and his presence alone offered an event a level of prestige, and he'd often announce his arrival at a party by letting off a big flash from his camera, which really riled up the crowd. Like Sidibe in Bamako, Punjabi was always on the move. Although a majority of his archive comprises of indoor studio work, it's helpful to bring up his outdoor photography as well, and see him, alongside Sidibe, as both a photographer and a community member. Punjabi often squeezed himself into the center of wedding processions as they led themselves down with the groom. In one image in particular, he photographs a smiling man mid-dance in one such wedding procession, his arms outstretched, framing the men standing behind him. On the darkened background of the image, where Punjabi's flash can't reach, the groom approaches as well on a horse, waving an arm in celebration. In another photograph, made during a less formal occasion, a number of young men crowd around a bench, possibly near a dhaba, exchanging matchsticks and gestures. Like the group photograph of Sidi Bey's from his 1966 chemise, there is an intractable sense of energy and movement that runs through these images. 
as most of the young men, at least in this particular image, seem entirely unaware of Punjabi's presence. Back inside his studio, the influences Punjabi accumulated from Nagra and the general visual culture that shaped the perspectives of the time, these perspectives also made it into his photographic arrangements. Consider the positioning of hands in one particular group portrait. Three friends sit shoulder to shoulder for a photograph in which the exchange of gazes and interlacing of hands carries a near filmic intensity. The man in the center stares directly into the lens, deadpan, holding the hand of the man to his right, who in turn gazes at the third man on the very left, whose focus is caught by something outside the frame. One of the great things about the chemise is that you get this whole sequence of photographs from the night. So you can really, looking at it, get a sense of how the evening progressed. Um, some of the fun details that I like looking at this piece is seeing the same people show up with different dance partners throughout the night. So you have this one woman in the, in the striped dress you see multiple times. Um, you also notice that there's different compositional styles in the photographs, so some of the dancers to sort of pause and look over their shoulder and make eye contact with the photographers. Others seem totally engrossed in what they're doing, don't even register a city-based presence. And others still have totally paused from dancing and are posing for the camera. So this is this great mix of different scenes, and it all concludes, culminates with this really lovely, fun group portrait at the end. My favorite detail, if you look closely on the top row, you can see a stack of vinyl records in the background, and a man, possibly the DJ, waving at the camera. It's a really fun detail. Although distinct in its context from Sidibe's nighttime work, this image, among others, shows Punjabi's deep interest in posture and facial expressiveness as a way into exploring personal affect and interpersonal relationships. Though not dancing, his sitters often exhibit a kind of playful formality, a visual temperament that sits somewhere between the conviction of performance and the charming irregularity of rehearsal. You can also get a sense of the personalities of the people in the room. So there's one uh, portrait in particular with these really intense stares of the, the two dancers in the picture. And it's really fun to get a sense of the, the levity and seriousness. And you almost get a sense that they're um, just kind of, they look serious, but they're just kind of holding back laughter, like they're about to burst out laughing a second, uh, a second later. Looking at his archive overall, one can see that Punjabi built a crucial bridge between the regulated dream world of his studio and the teeming human drama of everyday life outside it. His photographs are a gesture of community, and they owe a large part of their success to the fact that he was genuinely admired by members of his own. At its best, this work helps us see with greater sensitivity a time and place that was both chronicled distinctly by Punjabi but also part of a much, much larger, evolving national idea. So Sidipe is best known for his studio portraiture. Um, his studio photography catered to the youthful generation. It turned away from the stuffy, formal portraits of the past. He often photographed individuals or groups holding fun accessories. They're really vibrant. This, however, is an example of his event photography, which was ongoing at the same time as his studio practice. So from the late 1950s into the mid-70s, Sid Bay photographed a range of social events, including weddings, baptisms, and notably the nightlife of Bamako's. Like this, January 22nd, 1966, Saturday night. And that business continued until the mid-70s when personal cameras became more affordable and uh, professional nightclubs began to open. So his event photography ended in the mid-70s, but his studio continued to thrive. Although Punjabi and Sidi Bey were unaware of each other during these decades, putting their work in conversation helps foreground an approach that they both shared. In addition to being skilled artists, both were also engaged members of their communities, and their photographic practices emerged primarily from the strength of that engagement. It's this approach that makes both such skilled chroniclers of their worlds, and ultimately, what continues to draw us in decades later. 